So we're working on our bee campaign, everybody, and our goal of the bee campaign has been is to convince the EPA to stop the use of bee-killing pesticides. And the pesticides that we're trying to get rid of is a class of pesticides called neonicotinoids, uh, neonics for short. And what they are is they're a neurotoxin, so they're disorienting to the bees, and what happens is the bees get confused and can't make it back to their hive, and um, they eventually die off from this. And it's really, really harmful, and that's what we're trying to take on right now. There's a lot of different harmful pesticides across the world. These aren't the only ones, but this this is definitely a big step. Just in the last two months, we've been able to raise over $100,000 and collect over 54 petition signatures in our Northampton office. But we are also running this um, campaign in 38 different offices across the country and 18 states in DC, um, including two offices in Eastern Massachusetts. Um, well, our short-term goal for the summer is to have the EPA commit to moving up their timeline for testing these chemicals. Um, there's four major types that are on the market right now, and only one of them has actually officially been tested by the EPA. Um, and a major reason for that is because um, the large chemical companies who produce these chemicals really don't want them to be tested, um, and they have a lot of lobbying power. Um, I think the statistics is they spend like $2 million a day or a week or something like that, um, and we've only been able to raise $100,000 in two months so you know they have a lot more power and influence than we do um, but we're hoping you know just to gather enough support this summer so that the EPA will listen to the public rather than you know the lobbyists on Capitol Hill. So we go knock on doors from all the way to the Berkshires to Central Mass and I think what's really really interesting to hear is just the mixed bag of reactions like some people are super informed on the issue they know that bees have been dying off they know about colony collapse disorder uh, but some people don't know about this at all and some people are really really interested and really intrigued because they're like, I never hear about environmental news because it never gets like big kind of like headlines because it's not in the mainstream and it doesn't affect us like immediately all the time. So people tend to push it away. Um, so we have been really getting a lot of great feedback, especially in this area. We have a lot of supporters in this area. We've been getting a lot of canvassers who come back with great stories about people who absolutely love what we're doing and make and think that this need, really needs to be a priority. And yeah, it's really, we've had a great reception in the area. While a number of factors have been reported, um, you know, impacting the bee populations. Scientists point to the increased use of neonics, um, the insecticide that Matthias was just talking about. Um, they're a major cause to the recent uh, bee deaths. And the magnitude of the problem and the great outpouring of public support to save the bees has led to major uh, garden retailers such as Lowe's and Home Depot to phase out of the sales of these chemicals. And even some cities and states across the country are now trying to work to ban the use of these neonics. Those of us, of course, in the organic farm organizations are very concerned about neonics. I was catching a swarm that came out of the hive that I have. And he goes, we just don't have as many bees as we used to. And I said, well, Uncle Fletch, what do you mean by that? He goes, when I was young and when we were haying with the horses, the horses would stop. And they would stop for what? He said they would stop for swarms. So how many of you have seen a swarm? None of you. <laughs> we're talking about wild bees that were swarming. And so I, of course, I asked my uncle, well, how often did that happen? He said several times a day. So right now, the swarms that we have as beekeepers, if you keep bees on a farm, Basically, our loss, as stated earlier, was the fact that 30% of our bees that we're even cultivating were losing. But think of the fact that only 70 years ago, Uncle Fletch is 97, only 70 years ago, wild swarms of bees were several times a day, everywhere. Does that put it in perspective what's happening to our bees? These, uh, I think it's been said a few times, they pollinate 71 of the 100 major crops that make up 90% of our food supply. Um, that's a lot of numbers, but basically without bees, um, we wouldn't have a lot of the fruits and vegetables that we rely on. Um, we wouldn't have um, alfalfa to feed our cows. We wouldn't have just a lot of crops that we really, really depend on as a human species. Um, so, you know, without bees, we would have basically just our processed food and some of the wind pollinated crops. Um, so wheat is basically the only thing we would have left. Um, so, you know, it would just be a really, really terrible place. Plus, 
bees are really cute, so I like to think they make the world a little bit better. Yeah. And we would lose our flowers, too. <laughs> Save the bees! <laughs> you know, we have a really, really great staff, um, and we're really, really lucky to be doing the work that we do here. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the people of Northampton and Western Massachusetts for um, being so supportive and um, signing our petition and welcoming us into this community um, as we go around door to door.